What's up guys, I'm Dean and welcome back to my YouTube channel. The second video I ever posted on this channel was my top 50 films of all time. And now I've been updating that list over the years. Every time I see a film I really like, I have a look at the list and I see what I switch out for it. 26 of those films from the original video have now changed. So now the majority of my top 50 films of all time have changed. I'm going to go through my top 50 films of all time again. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this video in two parts. I'm gonna go through all the films that that were on the list originally and are still on the list, and then I'm gonna go through all the new additions to the list since the last time I made this video. Let's get into it. The first film in my top 50 films of all time that we're gonna talk about today is 1917. I need to rewatch this film. I'm gonna open up this conversation with that because I don't remember it great. But what I do remember great is that score because I listened to the score quite a bit. I remember when I watched this in the cinema, it might have been the most tense I've ever been during a film. I think the one shot worked really great. I think just the cinematography and the lighting were phenomenal. And I think there were some really good uses of color in this film as well. I think it's an excellent film. Obviously, I'm going to say that about all these films in this list, but I would really recommend it if you haven't seen it before because it is such... It, it, it is a very conventional war film, but it is still so unique in its music and its lighting and its cinematography and its score. The second film on my list is... It's Baby Driver. We all knew it was coming. Edgar Wright is my favourite director of all time. And this is the film that got me into cinema. I remember... Obviously, I'd always loved films and I always watched a lot of films. But leaving the cinema after watching Baby Driver, I just remember thinking, wow, that's what a film can be. And I've seen this film more times than any film probably in the last five years. And I just simply adore every aspect of it. Apart from some of the problematic cast, obviously, but we can move past that. The soundtrack is so well melded with the film. It is phenomenally done, unlike any film I've ever seen. I think the action is phenomenal, and Edgar Wright's just eye for for for, for linking dialogue with visuals and, 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 and conveying these ideas is unlike any other director. And it's a, it's an excellent film. This next film is a film I've constantly toyed with taking off this list, but I just can't find the strength in myself to do it, and that is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Does it deserve a spot in the top 50 films of all time? Probably not. But is this one of the most fun films of all time? Definitely. Bill and Ted are such fun characters, and it's such a comfort film for me. I think this film is so funny. I think it's so simple, and I think it's so wacky. Like, there's no better scene than when you have all these historical figures like Aristotle and, and Billy the Kid and, and Joan of Arc and, and Genghis Khan running around the mall and just wreaking havoc with Sigmund Freud, and then you get Napoleon in a water park. Like, these scenes are stupid, but they're so fun, and Bill and Ted deserves a place on this list for me, because I just have so much fun with this movie. Next up is a classic film, and that is The Empire Strikes Back. This, this deserves a place in a lot of top 50 films of all times. Uh, lists. This film deserves... Next up, we have a classic, and that is The Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars is obviously an incredibly formative franchise for me. I, I have been obsessed with these films probably since about the age of five. And, like, you know, back in the day, I would have rather a Phantom Menace or Avenger the Sith. I'm over the prequels. The original trilogy is where it's at, and Empire Strikes Back is the best of the best. This film takes everything you love about Star Wars, the world building, the wackiness, the... the just, just the... the, the, the characters and they just completely spin them around make everything about it better and then add even more there's more emotion more action more character driven scenes and just empire strikes back is a phenomenal film such a formative film and and i'm gonna i was about to say it's excellent which is what i'm gonna say about all these films but i can't help it i'm talking about 50 films which i adore here Next up is a film I don't have a massive urge to rewatch, and that's Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind. Jim Carrey's my favourite actor of all time, and he's going to come up maybe once, maybe twice more on this list. And this is one of his best films, without a doubt. This film is so well shot, and the way they kind of dress sets and 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 and, and composite scenes to to convey just this 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 mind, him losing his mind, I think is excellently done. I think Jim Carrey's performance. I think this might be his best performance. This isn't Jim Carrey's best film, but I think this is his best performance. Overall, I think this is an excellent film, and it just really breaks me every time I watch it. 
Next up is one of my favourite animated films of all time, and that is Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is now, unfortunately, the only Wes Anderson film on this list, but I love Wes Anderson, and I adore Fantastic Mr. Fox. Once again, it's a comfort watch for me, unlike Eternal Sunshine on the spotless mind. I think the animation style and the rhythm that's behind all the dialogue and all the movement and everything is so well-timed. It's kind of like Baby Driver that way, where it's like... There's a rhythm to everything that happens on the screen, and I just find that mesmerising, and I find that really fun to watch. And I think it's a funny film, I think it's it's a beautiful film, and I think it just really just, every time I watch it, I'm just encapsulated just by the art behind it. I think it's phenomenal, and I think all the voice performances are great as well. It's a unique animated film, which I really love when I'm going to watch animated films. Speaking of comfort watches, next up we've got Ferris Bueller's Day Off. This film is so fun. And I adore it. I just really think this film is just... It's just fun. I think it's silly. And I think there's a message behind it, which I think is really solid and strong. But the way it gets to that message, you kind of forget about it and you're having fun. And it's just a breeze. It's such a good film just to put on and watch and be like, yeah, this is like the life that I want to live and this is just a cool guy which I know isn't the point of the film but I can't help think those films when I'm watching it. Next up we have one of the few horror films on this list and that is Get Out. I need to watch more horror I'm aware of that but Get Out is probably my favourite horror film. I think the performance that Daniel Kaluuya gives is is unlike anything I've seen and I think Jordan Peele's directorial debut like for a directorial debut this film is great and I think it's got really solid firm foundations and I think the mystery is really well sold throughout and then it's and then you're given a satisfying explanation for it uh, without it like hitting you over the head with it I mean enough other people get hit over the head in this film and I think the turn in this film where the family turn to the villains I think is really really well done and I think it's good that it has a happy ending and he gets out of there and I think it isn't a fun film to watch, but you're, you, when you finish it, you've got, you you feel good because you just watched a great film and, and it ended happily, sort of. The first Marvel film on this list is Guardians of the Galaxy. This might be the only MCU film on this list. I haven't double-checked, but it is my favourite MCU film. I think James Gunn is the, is the king of comic book movies because he's never missed. This, Guardians of the Galaxy 2... The Suicide Squad and then Peacemaker as a TV show, I think, are some of the best superhero projects out there. And James Gunn just has not made a wrong move when it comes to superhero cinema. But that's besides the point of this Guardians of the Galaxy film. I think this is still his best superhero film. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is a close second, though. I think this film is so, so fun. I think it really does this ragtag, found family um, style of bringing these wacky characters together and giving them a heart and, and, and relating them to each other so, so well. Because you get a Fantastic Four film, for example. There's a lot of bad Fantastic Four films. And, like, the bad Suicide Squad film as well. Throughout, they're just telling you, oh, yeah, these characters are family and, and they, they really love each other. And then at the end, they do something to show that. This film really sells you that on that idea and you believe it. And all the characters are so well fleshed out and they get fleshed out even more in the future and they all get their own chance to shine. But here, that they're, they're all... So, so well done and so, so fun. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Great soundtrack as well. Maybe not utilised to the best degree like something like Baby Driver, but it's still great. Next up, we have Hacksaw Ridge. Andrew Garfield's maybe his best performance. He's going to come up on this list again. Hacksaw Ridge is, is a film that really gets, gets to my heart every time I watch it. I've seen it quite a few times. It's another war film uh, directed by Mel Gibson, I believe, and I think this film is so, so inspiring it's based on a true story of someone i believe his name's desmond doss who andrew garfield plays who who wants to go to the war but doesn't want to carry a gun because he's a pacifist because he's a christian and the story behind this man's fight to get into the army after everyone's trying to stop him and then all the people he inevitably saves i think is so excellent and this film's in two parts there's like kind of like a courtroom personal drama type thing of him trying to get into the army and everyone trying to kick him out so he can get to there and be a medic and help people and then it switches about the third act where he's in the army he's on the battlefield it's a horror film it is like just horrifying all these people around him exploding and dying and limbs falling off and he does his best to save them and every time he saves someone he goes please lord one more and he goes out and he saves one more person this film is excellent it is so good and i want to watch it again I I'm, what am I doing this afternoon? On to our second Edgar Wright film, we have Hot Fuzz. 
Hot Fuzz is perhaps the greatest comedy of all time. It's tied first for that for me with one other film. I think Hot Fuzz is the kind of film where every single line of dialogue in the first half of the film is called back to in a clever way in the second half of the film. I think the action is really solid. I think Nicholas Angel as a character is phenomenal. I think he's the best character in the Cornetto trilogy. And I just think the third act of this film is so tidy and so neat and so, so great. And it's got all the stuff you'd expect from Edgar Wright, like the quick cuts, the clever cinematography, the, the just all that kind of thing that you'd expect from him, the musical cues. It's all there and it's all great. And just the third act, I think this is Edgar Wright's best third act. I think it ties everything together in such a neat way. And that's my main takeaway every time I watch this film. Now I've seen it so many times. I know what you're thinking. I said that Hot Fuzz is tied for my best comedy of all time. What's it tied with? It's tied for Hunt for the Wilder People. This is the only Taika Waititi film on this list now. There are a few, as you saw, that I have cut out. But this film really is Taika's best. I think it gets his style of dialogue and comedy and just just silliness the best. And I think the story is so heartfelt. I think Sam Neill in this film is such a standout. And I think just, just the emotion behind this film is so real. And, and, and it just has an emotional core that, it, that it is unlike any of Taika's other films. And I just adore this film. I think it's incredibly funny, incredibly heartfelt. And, and it, it's just so fun to watch. It's a good time every time I watch it. The second superhero film on this list might not be the one you're expecting, but it's the one you need. And that's The Incredibles. I rewatched this recently, and it is still just one of the best superhero films of all time. It is a parody of of a genre before the genre was even at its peak, before there was even something so substantial to parody. It is before its time. It is so intelligent. It, it looks great. The action is great. It has all these different people with different powers, and each power is utilised in an interesting way. The villain is really solid, but what is best about this film is that at its core, it's a family drama. At its core, it's an emotional story about a real family. I mean, the family feels real is what I'm trying to say. And I think that's why The Incredibles is is one of the best superhero films of all time. It's the best Fantastic Four film, obviously. And you know what? Watching this film makes me go like, oh, I miss the days where they just got voice actors to voice act instead of Chris Pratt. Next up is a film that's in my top five films of all time. If you don't know, my top five films of all time are Baby Driver and four others. The first one we're going to talk, the second one we're going to talk about, I guess, is Knives Out. I've rewatched this twice this year already, and I watched it once in December. This film is one of the greatest mystery films. No, it's the, the greatest whodunit of all time. I think it's so neat and tidy. With with Basically, it... it, it, it it makes you feel intelligent by by making you think you know what's going on, but but at the last second it's going ha ha no you were wrong all along and this is what's going on. But it doesn't do that in a cheap way. It does it in an incredibly inventive way, and it completely. I hate I hate this phrase. It does reinvent the genre. I think that phrase is thrown about a bit willy nilly, but this film does reinvent the genre. Next up is perhaps my favourite film of all time, the third film in the top five, and that is La La Land. La La Land is the most beautiful, the most just 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 musically f profound film I've ever seen. I think the cinematography and the lighting and the framing is perfect. I think the music and the way it's utilized within the scene is perfect. I think the the lead performances from Ryan Gosling at Emma Stone are unlike any performances I've ever seen. I could talk about this film all day, but I'm not, because there's 49 other films to talk about. But La La Land is great. I recently wrote a 3,000-word essay about this film for university, and I've never had more fun writing an essay. Like, I just banged it out, and I'm not that kind of nerd that loves writing essays. But this essay, I loved, because La La Land deserves that. Phenomenal film. Anyway, next up we have another superhero film, and that's Logan. I need to rewatch Logan because it, because it's great. I think it, it it kind of wouldn't be this good if it didn't have the 15, 20 years, whatever it is before, of, of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And I think it builds on that in such an interesting way. And I think it's a very, very emotional and very grounded goodbye to this character. And, and I, I just think it does that really, really well. And it's really shot well. And I think the action is great. And I think the 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 characters at its core are really well sold to me. Tom Cruise is making his first appearance on this list, but it will not be his last with Mission Impossible Fallout. I love the Mission Impossible films, and this one is the best one. Henry Cavill as the villain is mwah, phenomenal. The action is mwah, phenomenal, and the emotion that builds up, the tension that builds up, great. 
just great. This is one of the best action flicks of all time. Okay, okay, hear me out on this one, because if you disagree on this film and you think it's bad, we can't be friends. We're, of course, talking about The Muppets. The Muppets is an incredibly emotional tale. It's incredibly emotional, but at the same time, it's incredibly self-aware. The music is great. The comedy is great. The, the, the emotion is great and the performances are great. If you disagree with me on this, stop watching this video right now. Okay, The Muppets are supreme. Next up is Parasite. This is another one of those films I'm like, yeah, this this is on a lot of top 50s because it is is a phenomenal film. It, it was one of the first foreign films I ever watched. I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I love it. I think it really, really is something special. I didn't need to rewatch it, but it really is something unique and clever and intelligent. And I think the, the commentary behind it is great. The tension there is great. And the ending is phenomenal. Parasite, what, what else shall I say? From one foreign film to another, we have Shin Godzilla. This is the best Godzilla film. I'm a big Godzilla fanboy, and this is without a doubt the best film. I think in the past, you tell Godzilla films from different points of view. Sometimes you'll tell it from the citizens, sometimes you'll tell it from the military. Usually the military. The military is like where the original Godzilla is told from, and that's where a lot of the adaptations come from as well. But here it kind of tells it from the bureaucratic government point of view and it's like this film is kind of about death by bureaucracy and just the, all the people that need to make decisions and all of that and I think it's a political thriller just as much as it is a big monster killing a city and those two ideas mesh together so well here it's a unique film the best Godzilla film go watch it if you haven't already put it on your watch list right now next up we've got Shrek 2 Shrek 2 is funny Shrek 2 is great Shrek 2 is the best it sounded like I was going for a ride there. I wasn't. The Shrek films are great. The first two. And Shrek 2 is the best one. I think it's so funny. I think the emotion is there. I think the story is there. It just hits all the beats it should. And, and, it, and, it, and it, it does everything the Shrek first Shrek film does. But better. Shrek 2 is great. Going from one animated film to another. We have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The best animated film of all time. This film is also in my top five. So, so far we've had Baby Driver. La La Land. Knives Out. And this. The, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the best superhero film of all time. I have talked about this film so much in so many other videos, but I rank Spider-Man when I, you know, stuff like that. This film is so beautiful. I think the animation is, is, is perfect and it is so unique. But behind that, there is still a great story here. And there is still great action. And there's great, great characters. Next up is, next, next, next up is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Star Wars The Last Jedi is on this list because Star Wars The Last Jedi is the best Star Wars film. No, I won't be taking criticism on that. This film is one of those films where, like, it, it was it was a very formative film for me because around when this film came out, I was I was getting into cinema. And and, and like of like I said, I was always into films, but getting into cinema I think is different when you start to look look behind the film itself. And I think Ryan Johnson here does a great job, and I'm gonna defend this film for as long as I live. So, so take that, okay? The last film that is on both of my old top 50 films list and my new top 50 films list is also the last film to fulfil my top five films of all time, and that is The Truman Show. This is Jim Carrey's best film. This film is so carefully made where every camera angle, every every decision to do with that is is so excellently made with the plot in mind i think jim carrey gives a performance here which is phenomenal but i think what really sells this film is the writing it's such a unique idea and, and, and this is another phrase i think is overused but it was so ahead of its time i think it was kind of parodying something that didn't even exist yet which which is incredible to say and i think the way it does that is so well done and i think this has the greatest closing of any film ever where where Truman is standing at the door and he has the conversation with the director Christoph and their back and forth is some of the best written dialogue ever and, and the Truman show is just one of those films I can always watch find more stuff that that interests me and go wow I didn't I haven't noticed that before even though I've seen this film a dozen times it's great those are all the 24 films that are on both lists now let's get into the 26 films which are new Starting in a bit of an odd place, perhaps, we have About Time. It's a rom-com. I have a secret soft spot for rom-coms. It's not a secret. I'm not ashamed of it. I'll happily admit it. And About Time is the best rom-com of all time. 
because it's about so much more than the will they, won't they. Oh no, he's been hiding something from her. Oh no, they've fallen out, blah, blah, blah. This story is about the essence of life and how best to live it. And I think the way it tells that story is so well done. I think Domino Gleason is great. I think Bill Nye is great. I think Rachel McAdams is great. Uh, they're all great. Tom Hollander is, is a great comedic standout here. Someone I don't really notice in a lot of films, not as an insult to him. But he's great here. And I think if you haven't seen About Time and you're just watching, wait, wanting a fun film to watch, I'd watch this. I mean, it's not just a fun film. It's not something like Ferris Bueller where I watch that because I want to have fun. Because About Time is also incredibly profound. But at its core, it's still a rom-com. And it has just an interesting sci-fi mechanic, like, stapled onto it, which is really utilised in, in the best way possible. Because they don't really go into it. They're just like, it's there, deal with it. And I think that's great. Next up, we have Apocalypse Now. This film is great. I think it, it is incredibly influential for a reason. I think the performance at its core is phenomenal. I think the way this film was made is really, really interesting. And I think the, the finale, I think, is, 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 is so, so solid. And I think the build-up to that is just so tense. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a very well-made film and I don't have a lot to say. Now we have a run of three new films. Banshees of Inner Sharon is a great film. I think this film it really works because of its dialogue and its performances. I think Colin Firth... And I always get Colin Firth confused with Colin Farrell. And and Brendan Gleeson, we just talked about his son, are really great here. And I think this film is... is it, 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 at it, on the outside, it just looks like a simple black comedy. Just where some wacky things happen and it's a bit interesting. But really, this film is about masculinity and loneliness and friendship and all those things. And I think it really tells this story and, and conveys these themes in a great way. And the next new film on this list is Babylon. I love Damien Chazelle, if you couldn't tell about my whole spiel about La La Land. And I think this film is really being overlooked by so many people because I, I think it was overlooked at award shows partially because it was kind of criticising Hollywood a lot. And, and I think the music here was great. I think the three lead performances were some of the best performances I've seen in any film ever. And I think the the, the finale is a bit cheesy but it was phenomenal. I think the film really, really earned it. It was not what I was expecting going into a Damien Chazelle film because it was gross and weird. But it was great. It was great. Another new three-hour-long film is The Batman. The Batman is great. The Batman is one of the best. It's probably my favourite live-action superhero film of all time. I think this film understands Batman like no other, and it's grounded in the best way possible. A lot of superhero films are grounded in the way like, oh, this is what would happen if Batman was in the real world, and it, oh, here's him with some realistic gadgets and blah, blah, blah. The Batman does ground it in the way where I think it really works, where it's like, this is the effect being Batman would have on a man if it was real. And I think the way it, it delivers on that, perfect. Next up on the list, we have The Big Lebowski. This is another one of those films that from the outside just looks like a, a silly fun film about a silly guy having a fun time and going on, a, on and some crazy hijinks. But once again, it, it it's a complex story about wealth and 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 once again, masculinity and all these, these kind of themes, which I think are really well conveyed throughout the film in a really fun way. And I think... I think it's kind of just just the, the Big Lebowski. Well, he's the lead, isn't the Big Lebowski? Um, the dude at the core, I think, is a great character, and I think he's really well sold by Jeff Bridges. I think this is his best performance. Next up, we have Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, a, a, a kung fu film which I had never seen before, and I watched in preparation for Shang Chi, which my friend Jimmy recommended to me. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is a phenomenal film. It's better than Shang Chi. It is, I need to rewatch it, but it's shot so well. The action is so great, and I think the characters are so, so great. Michelle Yeoh is in this, and she's amazing in everything, everywhere, all at once, and also she's amazing in everything else. Uh, this film is great. I recommend it if you haven't seen it already. Next up, we have Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee. This film is is an interesting one because it's one of those films where you're watching it and it is it, it like it does have themes throughout obviously and it does have a message throughout but while you're watching it you just forget about all that because you're enjoying the characters and you're enjoying the dynamics between them and you're enjoying the situations they're put into but then it gets to the third act and you're like oh this is a completely different film to what I was expecting and the third act really just just tightens all the all the story and all the characters and all the themes that are going on throughout the film into a perfect crescendo. And that's what you want from a third act. I think this film is really, really great. Next up, we have Doctor Strange Love and How I Le... le, 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 le. Next up, we have Doctor Strange Love and How I Learned to Stop Loving the Bomb. 
a great film. Obviously, I don't know why I keep saying great film, but this is a great film. I think this is an amazing parody. I think it's incredibly funny. I think it's, once again, to use a phrase which I think is overused, I think it was ahead of its time. I think it is a really, really intelligent parody. I think it's a great satire. I think it's got some really funny moments, but also a great message at its core, which it doesn't take too seriously, which I always appreciate. Next up is a is a film which is... Which is incredibly sad. And that's The Father, uh, starring Anthony Hopkins as, as a man with dementia. I think this film, it, it it really, like, conveys this idea of dementia in such a confusing way. And it really just, it confuses you. And, and, and it just, it, it makes you feel so sorry for Anthony Hopkins, who gives one of the performances of his career. And that's saying a lot when you're talking about a man like Sir Anthony Hopkins. I think he is so great here, and I think this film is such an emotional watch, and, and it's just a really, really solid film. On to more familiar territory, we have Jurassic Park. Formative. I keep using that word a lot, but if you're talking about my top 50 films of all time, obviously a lot of them are going to be formative. This film is scary. This film blends an animatronics and CGI great. I think this is the one of the last best films to do this because now it's just an overindulgence in cgi and, and not enough use of animatronics in my opinion i think this film is fun i think sam neill once again is a standout here i think he he's great but the cast overall is great you've got like the cast is stacked you've got sam neill laura dern jeff goldblum you've got richard attenborough I don't need to sing my praises about this film for too long because we've all seen it and we all love it i'm assuming i hope so Next up is Kingsman, The Secret Service. I think this film is, is a lot of fun, and, and I think it's got, it's, good. It's, just, it's just a lot of fun. I think it's got great action. I think it's really stylized in a really, really great way, and I think it really captures the best elements of the graphic novel it's based on and and changes them enough to still be a lot of fun and, like, and improves all the worst elements of, of the graphic novel. My favourite animated film from the Walt Disney Animated Studio is The Lion King. I'm talking about the 1994 one, obviously, not the not the remake. This film is so good, I think. There's there's emotion behind it. Um, it's such a classic tale, and I think the way it's told and the way all these animals are utilised is great. I think the music is phenomenal, obviously, and I think the way it's animated, it's all colourful and bouncy and, 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 and lively, I think is great. The Lion King is great. It's a great film. It's great. I, I, I've been talking for too long. I think I'm just losing my mind a bit. If you've seen Paddington 2, I don't need to explain why it's on this list. It is funny. It is It is. It, it has such a strong emotional core. I think it's silly, which I love a silly film, if you can't tell from this is, because I'm a bit of a silly guy. I think it's so much fun. I think the emotion behind it is so strong. Overall, one of the best films of all time, obviously. I can't wait for Paddington 3. On to slightly different ground, we have Rear Window, an Alfred Hitchcock film. It's the only Alfred Hitchcock film on this list because I need to watch more of his films. But this film is great. I think its story is like very unique and very simple at the same time. I think the characters behind it are a lot of fun to watch. And I think the the climax of this film is really, really solid. And then and then you watch it again and there's all this stuff you didn't notice. Oh, there's 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 more themes to it. Like the themes are, are more woven throughout than I even thought because when you watch a film from the start, you notice that things that you would only notice if you've seen the end. It's just a lot of fun to watch. Next up is a film I've spoken about on this channel recently, and it might surprise some people, but it's Rocky 2. I love the Rocky franchise. I love Rocky Balboa as a character. I think he's he's just a lovable big goof. And this film is where he's the most lovable, he's the most big. And perhaps not the most big, but he's the most goof. I think the Adrian and Rocky love story in Rocky 2 is great. I think the Apollo Creed stuff is great. The final fight is phenomenal. The music, as always, is phenomenal. And it's just such an inspiring story. I think Sylvester Stallone is great. And this is great direction from him. Best, be Great performance from him. Great writing from him. Next up, we have another new release. And that is RRR. A three-hour epic i cannot sing my praise of this enough i think it was ranked number one of all 70 whatever films i watched in in 2022 this film is just phenomenal the action is great the music is great the performances are great the physicality our two leads have is great i think the way it's shot is great i think all the cgi is really really solid 
I think the emotion between these two leads is is great, and I think their their friendship and their bond and their, and their their and and how they're sold to us as brothers over the course of the film is phenomenal. Musical numbers, great action, great. I think it has everything you want in a film somehow all in one it because it's a, a, a brilliant musical it's a brilliant action film it's a brilliant drama it, it's just all these things rolled into one three hour long epic and i would recommend it if you haven't seen it already go and watch it after i finish filming this i'm gonna go listen to the soundtrack next on this list we have a short german film called run lola run i think it's kind of groundhog day if you haven't seen it before and i think the way it sells those ideas is really really solid and i think it's just a, a brief fun quick watch that what that works perfectly throughout next up we have a film which i only watched the first time recently and that's the shawshank redemption another film which i'm sure it is a lot of people's top 50s because it's another one of those films that just has an excellent third act and everything in the film brilliantly leads up to it it's a great film and i was about to tell you guys to watch it but i'm sure most of you have watched it already because i'm very behind the curve on this one the penultimate superhero film on this list is Spider-Man. I think this is one of the best superhero films of all time. And once again, I'm using the word again, it's incredibly formative, not just for me, but for the superhero genre as a whole. I think Sam Raimi's direction here is great. I think Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, I know he's like 50 years old, but he's great. And I like the, the Willem Dafoe as the villain is one of the best superhero villains of all time. I think that goes without saying. I think the emotional story behind what Spider-Man goes through is, is just the pinnacle of Spider-Man. This is the most Spider-Man, Spider-Man film out of all the Spider-Man films. I'm not saying it's the best Spider-Man film, but it's the most Spider-Man one, if that makes any sense. Next up, we have Spirited Away, an animated film which is weird and it's fun. And it's it, and the music, I listen to the music for this a lot because it's so, so great. And I think the animation looks so unique. And I think the story is, 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 is a classic story, but it's really told in a unique way, which makes it a lot of fun to watch. We have five films left to talk about. Next up is Spotlight, an incredibly horrifying film. It's about a group of investigative journalists who uncover the molestation in the Catholic Church, and obviously you don't see any of that. So when I say it's horrifying, I don't mean in that regard, I just mean just the sheer quantity of it. I think the film does a really good job of ramping it up and showing the effect it has on these real people. This film is excellent, and I thank my friend Newt's Films, aka Liz, for introducing me to it. The last superhero film on this list may be a surprise to some. You guys remember saying James Gunn is the master, The Suicide Squad is on this list because it does the, the family dynamic so well, it does the character dynamic so well, it is gory in the best way, it does action in the best way, and it is exactly what a Suicide Squad film should be. This is just more evidence that he's the best. I think this film is just so excellent, so fun, and so wacky, and so emotional. I think all the characters really have a time to shine on the core team, and I think they're all great. They're all great. Next up is Tick, Tick, Boom, uh, another Andrew Garfield film. This film is so good. I think the music is great. I listened to this on repeat for months after this film came out, and I think all of that is just excellent. It's all excellently done. I think Andrew Garfield's performance is, is phenomenal. I think the way this film is shot um, in like how it, how it kind of subverts the musical is really, really great too. The penultimate film on this list is a new one, and that's Top Gun Maverick. I saw this in the cinema four times, which is more times than I've ever seen anything in the cinema, because it's great. That opening with Danger Zone is phenomenal. The action is phenomenal. Tom Cruise is great, like, bad man, but, but great, great eye for cinema. He understands cinema, and I love him, but I also despise him. Top Gun Maverick is 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 just one of those films where the cinema experience just really elevates it to a whole new level because the sound and the light and just the lighting throughout the film is great when it when you're making a film about the monitor i think it'll be very easy just to make this film gray and drab and this film does have some grays but it's still like it it, it, it still has such clarity and all the action has such clarity too it's great the last film on this list might be one of the most controversials most controversials i've been talking for too long and that's yesterday all my troubles seem so far away and but now it looks like they're here to say it stay oh i believe in yesterday i'm a massive beatles fanboy i've got a i've got a beatles phone case um and i love the beatles and maybe that's why i'm a bit biased on this film because i think it really sells the 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 cult status and and the effect the beatles had on our uh society 
brilliantly and I think beyond that it still is a great rom-com with a, with an emotional core and a great message you know it's just a classic rom-com with the Beatles chucked in and that's why I love it and it probably shouldn't be on this list but it is deal with it <gasps> that's all 50 films thank you for watching uh, please like this video please comment what you think is the best film out of all 50 of these and the worst film out of all 50 of these down below please subscribe Thank you for watching, and I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week for a, for a different video, probably. Yeah, yeah. bye.